has taken over. Let's go. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. Steaks, chicks, stacks. You and I are going to make a lot of money. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. It's Pharrell on the bands, coast to coast, in the biggest way possible. Hanging out of bands, eating a bird, eating a bad apple with a bad attitude. Hanging around a bunch of bad, and a bad, take bad, love, bad, do bad, 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 bad vibes. We are live in the Magic City Studios in the Pharrell Appalachia, right across the river through the woods from where Granny loves to snap tubes of the alien ass hat hybrid in New York City. The Big Apple. Ooh. People dressed in plastic bags, directed trailers, some kind of fashion shake it up, should do bit. All my vinegar come around, flat to flat a party up. Rats on the west side, bed bugs uptown, with the best is tied out of my brain. Splattered all over Manhattan, should do be shake it up. It's only rock and roll, but I like it, like it. Yes, I do, but I like it. Hey, what's gigging? I'm Pharrell, along with your boy Carver Hines. <laughs> Mafia running it with Hayden Fry at LTN in Kansas City. Mo in charge. A Thirsty Thursday birthday roll call. Cam Reddish, 23. DJ Swearinger, 31. Miles Plumley, 34. Mark Harslick, 35. Sydney Rice, 36. Clayus Campbell, 36. Leotis McKelvin, 37. Ryan Gomes, 40. Clinton Portis, 41. Aaron Sobel, 45, Contino Mobley, 47, Jason Taylor, legend, 48, Zach Thomas, 49, Tim Hardaway, 56, Hardy Nickerson, badass, 57, Carl Mecklenburg, 62, a freak, Kenny Main, 63, the former ESPN anchor, how stupid were they to let him go, uh, Vinny Johnson, 66, Phil Fulmer, 72, and Greg Maddox, Unbelievable. Excuse me. Gary Maddox, the former Philly. Happy birthday to you. He's 73 today. Happy birthday to you. All right. Uh, we got afternoon day ball. The Mariners are ass spanking the Tigers six to nothing right now. The last time I checked, uh, the Royals were up one nothing on the White Sox. Boy, are the White Sox pathetic. It's unbelievable. The Dodgers and Mets getting set to go on a beautiful day in New York City, out in Queens. They're going to get that one in. Kershaw and the Bassett Hound getting set to go. The Mets beat the Dodgers last night because Brandon Nimmo made the player of the year in baseball with a glove on his hand, uh, robbing Justin Turner of a home run to dead center field. And that was all she wrote. Mookie Betts on the show today. Steve Cohen thinks... 300 million is a nice number for the payroll, not 350. We'll talk about uh, the A's and Nats getting set to go. Mariners beat the Tigers yesterday, 5-3. Toro with a two-run homer. White Sox finally won a game. They beat the Royals 4-2. Angels over the Yankees 3-2. Otani with a blast, number 30. He's the first player in history with 10 wins as a pitcher and 30 home runs in a season. Judge still the heavy favorite for the MVP. The Yankees. 10 and 18 in August, their worst record since 1991 in a calendar month. We got Aaron Boone on the show. O's beat Cleveland for zip. I had the Orioles plus 150. Check it out. Gunnar Henderson with a home run for his first hit in the majors. It's happened a bunch this year. Guys get called up. They put on a show. Cards beat the Reds 5-3 and 13. Newt Barr with a homer in the 13th inning. Rays over the Marlins 2-1 and 10. Margot with the go-ahead hit in the 10th. And Dirty Harry McClanahan gets put on the 15-day IL with a shoulder problem. we got the lion's share coming up. Plus, Scoop Mish is with us today. Craig Mish from Newswire and Fantasy Sports today. Braves beat the Rockies 3-2. It wasn't easy. Austin Riley hit a home run. Acuna's knee is terrible. He's going to play through it, allegedly. Red Sox beat the Twins 6-5. I had him at plus a buck five. Check out. Ooh. Phillies beat the D-backs. Bryce Harper, RBI single. Cover. D-backs exercise the option on Tori Lobobo for 23. The Astros beat the Rangers 5-3 yesterday afternoon. Brewers over the Bucks 6-1. Padres beat the Giants 5-4 for the sweep. Nats 5-1 over the A's. Cubs 7-5 over the Jays. I had the Cubs at plus 190, folks. Check out. Cover. Carlos Craig going to play for Puerto Rico in the WBC. And... MLB argues that Angel Hernandez three overturn calls in the 18 ALDS is what cost him his World Series spot. He went to court over at Ulysses. We welcome all of our radio affiliates to Coast to Coast on a Thursday. 
Sirius XM channel 159, Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio in San Diego and it's here. Wanna do you wanna? Sports map, sports byline. Good to have you with us. We'll break down tonight's four games in the show. It's not going to matter because we've got college football, but I'll talk about that later. Warren Sharp will join us, our lead NFL analyst. The New York Post, page six, reports Tom Brady and Giselle are in an epic fight over Tom's decision to unretire. Could it be the end of Tom's perfect streak, his run of excellence? It looks like it's ending. What could be worse than knowing your wife would leave you and end up with another man when she's a smoke show supermodel? That'll cause you to have sleepless nights, maybe hit the bottle, maybe hit some pills, see a shrink. What would you do, Carver High? Baker Mayfield says he didn't uh, say he was going to Pharrell anybody up. Backing it up, backtracking, wheeling that one back into the garage, huh, Baker? Jerry Jones says that Tyler Smith will start at left tackle. Mike McCarthy talking about it. We got LaFleur on the show today, Robert Salah on the show, Mac Jones on the show. To a name, Dolphins captain Joe Burrow on the show today. Mike, uh, excuse me, Miles Sanders back after a long layoff. We got today in Carver High history. Uh, we got tons of college football. Pat Narduzzi's on the show. James Franklin on the show. We'll break down all the games. Every game tonight, we'll take a uh, look at the uh, odds in the SEC, Big Ten, Big 12, ACC, Pac-12. We got live for odds for Boston this weekend. Serena does it again, knocks out the number two seed. The lover of you. That's Bill Bender from the Coast to Coast. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. In the landscape of college sports, some things remain the same. College the football today. Alabama and winning SEC champion. It's the Island of Misfit Tour. Fantasy sports so today. You have to understand that. $4 word. gap between them and Kansas City. Pro football now them today. Two when this happened to this franchise, they are comical. Now, I'm not making light of the injury. This is a brutal rash. In-game live all access. You can take the money line. And the sports book, if you shop around, you can get it at 133. But um, that's my best bet on the night, Joe. So that's the one I'm going big. In-game live. Prime time. I'm going a bit nostalgic. I'm going with an international. Jason Day and Sergio Garcia. But boy, you want to give me eight and a half points with a desperate team facing elimination? Get the winning edge. Only on Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. I don't know how it's going to work out for him, but I just don't see him being on the field nearly as much as he was last season. Maybe the touchdown numbers will, will have him in that tight end one category. Earlier in his career, he would have gotten out. I mean, I guess he had 108 rushing yards, but six rushing touchdowns in his career. So it doesn't give you any upside there. Carr, to be honest, for me, just is not a guy I ever end up targeting. Fantasy Sports Today, only on Sports Grid. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or TuneIn, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. After. How does Chicago respond in game two tomorrow against Connecticut? They just got to get better overall play offensively. Only held to 63 points. Obviously, Connecticut is a really good defensive team. And if it wasn't for Candace Parker, folks, with 19, 18, 5, 4, and 6 blocks, yep. that would have been a double digit home loss. They got to get better play out of Alley Quigley. The Sports Grid Network.
There's no better feeling than a win, except a bad MGM win. That one hurt good. You feel that? Yeah! Now you're winning with the king of sports books. Come on. Carver, I'm constantly taking cars uh, to get things uh, fixed. I'm always uh, asking you for, you know, your expertise and reference point of, of all things knowledgeable inside an engine is you're a genius. And I went to the guy today and he uh, got the car. He said, so what's the problem, sir? I said, the problem is you don't have the bet MGM app. You know, for $10, you can bet on a major league game and get $200 if either team hits a home run. If you use the bonus code MLBHR2022, and the guy said, what did you just say to me? I said, $10, if you bet on any game, it's $200 in your pocket, buddy. All you have to do is use the MLBHR code, uh, MLBHR2022 code, and you're good. And he said, what's wrong with the car? I said, listen, buddy, if you don't get the BetMGM app, I'm just going to leave right now. And he got the app, and then I left the car with him, and then I'm sure he's going to rip me off later. Worked out pretty good. I would say so. Uh, hopefully, he just doesn't rip you off later. Uh, you don't really want that to be the case that happened. You know that's I'd coming. That you gave him, you gave him a pretty sweet deal either way. I would have to say. Uh, all right, we got a lot to do today, of course, Scotty. College football starts tonight, for real. Uh, later on on Coast to Coast, we will get into all of that. But we have some day ball that we need to start with today, including final game of the series between the Mets and the Dodgers, which starts at the top of the hour. Only playing one tonight at City Field. The Basset Hound and Clayton yeah. Kershaw will be on the mound. Uh, Dodgers, the road favorite, Scotty, minus 135. Mets plus a buck 15. Seven and a half is the total. I wouldn't expect a lot out of Kershaw, Scotty. It's his first start back off the IL. They're talking somewhere in the range of 65 to 70 pitches today uh, for Kershaw on his start. And allegedly, they have this uh, problematic bullpen. So, uh, I don't know. I just have a hard time. And you know I like the Basset Hound. I just have a hard time believing that he's going to beat Clayton Kershaw. Uh, If Kershaw is out there without problems, he's still, you know, 7-4 and with a low ERA. He's always effective when he pitches. He had a problem. He went on the I.L. He's back. And if he doesn't have a problem, I'm on the Dodgers to win the series. And one other thing, Patrick McEnroe still selling the doubleheader tonight uh, at City Field all day long on ESPN. He's been reporting that they're playing two at City Field tonight. And the first game starts at four. And the second game's not starting, Pat. But you'll still be covering tennis at one in the morning. So you stick to that, Slick. After this four o'clock Met Dodger game, the next time they play will be in October. Uh, Scotty. Yeah, they will not play a second game. The next game, Mets Dodgers will be around the middle of October. Uh, that's the next time that they are going to see each other. Mets did even this series last night, Scotty. Another fun, low pitched game, uh, low scoring game out at City Field. You had a big home run from the Marte party again. And who saves the day for the Mets? How about Brandon Nimmo, Scotty, on SNY with one of the best catches uh. of the year in baseball? Turner drives one to center, chasing Nimmo back to the warning track, right at the fence. He made the catch! Oh, wow! The catch of the year for Brandon Nimmo! He took a home run away from Justin Turner! Wow. Brandon Nimmo keeps the Mets in front in this game by bringing one back. I got to tell you, uh, first of all, I hate the Mets. Second of all, uh, I had the Dodgers plus a buck 40. And when I saw that ball flying off his bat and I knew it was gone, uh, that was tying that game. And then they get to uh, go 2 2 and see what happens. And I had plus a buck 40 on that puppy. When he caught that ball, I almost cabled in my pants. I mean, it just absolutely, I almost had a, a, a full on, you know, you know, session right there, just right there, right in my pants. 
I actually, uh, it ruined my day. Well, another strong outing from Jacob DeGrom last night as well, Scotty. He goes seven innings, nine strikeouts, got over the eight and a half that we talked about yesterday. Did give up a home run to Mookie Betts, Scotty. Here's Betts afterwards. Despite hitting a homer over to, off DeGrom, he had nothing but great things to say about Jacob. Here's Mookie Betts. Uh, I mean, I don't even know how to really answer it. I mean, you know, he's pretty much the best, you know, maybe the best to ever pitch. So um, he's uh, it's a tough, t- uh, tough task, um, but uh, we did all right. What is the most difficult part of facing him? Is it the fastball? Is it sliders? Is it all of it? All of it. I mean, he, all of it. All of it. Idiot. And he just kind of lives on the edge, too. And so uh, and then he, you know, has 101. You know, it's kind of when he does leave it out over the plate, you swing and miss or you foul it off. So um, it's uh, very hard to hit off him. I got to tell you, uh, Carver High, I am, you know, sick that they didn't get it done because that took some giant grapefruit sized stones to bet on anyone against Jacob deGrom, particularly that he's four and O at, at city. He doesn't lose. He's, uh, you know, unhittable. You can't score runs on him. They got the home run, but they almost had the second home run. I'm telling you, sometimes you got to go for it. That's a really good team. So I was like, this is a World Series type of game or a uh, pennant game or, a, you know, you're facing the best of the best of the best. How do you scratch two runs across uh, is how you win a game. And they couldn't do it. And, man, I could taste that a uh, buck 40 all night. I-, I knew they were in trouble when, it, you know, they were down 2 nothing, right? Then it was 2-1. I started getting, like, maybe they're going to get some. If they could get him out of the game and get to the bullpen, and uh, they just couldn't do it. So I went for it. Sometimes you got to go for it. Well, maybe the Dodgers will uh, get it back for you here this afternoon out at City Field, Scotty. Uh, Mets owner Steve Cohen also has hinted that $300 million may be the spending limit. We had heard uh, that story a week or two ago that $350, 400 right. could get that high. He's saying, uh, calm down, guys, uh, maybe 300 I don't believe that. Uh, if there's an opportunity for him to go past 300, Scotty, for something really nice, uh, he likes to shop uh, at the expense of stores. So he'll be able, he'll add to the tab uh, if he needs to down the line. And then in coming no years, number that's big enough, in, right? in five years, it'll be 400. <laughs> it certainly will. Uh, we do have one other game at the top of the hour. The A's and the Nationals in D.C. again this afternoon, Scotty. Espino goes for the Nats, and Ken Waldchuk goes for the Oakland A's today, Scotty. Who? He is the other arm that the A's got from the Yankees in the Montas deal, along with Sears. So that means he'll probably throw about seven shutout innings today uh, for the A's. They're minus 105. Nats are minus 115, eight and a half the total. I took the A's because Espino's so awful. He's He's 0-6. I mean, he's he's five runs automatic. And by the way, when I was a kid, believe it or not, this is a true story, uh, one of my nicknames was Fairchuck. They used to call me Fairchuck. And I, I'd chuck 30 footers and, and make them. They call me fair Chuck. I don't know why. Uh, I, cause wow. I'm Pharrell, but they call me fair Chuck. I don't know why at my whole childhood. I, I had fair Chuck. I just rolled with it. I got laid wow. a lot off of it. Are we on the air? Mafia boy, don't talk about boy, that. What? No, your boy Wald Chuck, uh, is going to get it done today for the A's. I could just feel it. Uh, there's two other games going this afternoon. Mariners lead the Tigers six to nothing. France hit another homer. Rodriguez hit another homer. I mean, they just beaten up the Tigers the last few days. And the White Sox now lead the Royals, Scotty, three one in the top of the fourth as they finally scratch a little something together there in the third. Yeah. Uh, Vaughn with a two-run homer there to uh, give him the lead, and they scratched another single, uh, drove in a run. It's 3-1 White Sox. So I'm betting on the White Sox today. I took a flyer on the Tigers. That's already used as a snot rag. <laughs> we will come back with the lion's share of Bet MGM right after this.
your heart's racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. 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 Get locked in with game time decisions. Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best slips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Cam Lou, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's Game Time Decisions, only on Sports Grid. Pro Football Doc has found its new home right here with Sports Injury Central. And with that comes our expansion into other sports. Sports Injury Central will give you nonstop exclusive injury analysis from experienced team doctors from all three major sports. Doctors with resumes that include teams like the Chicago Bulls, the Texas Rangers, and the LA Chargers. So gain a fantasy DFS and betting edge right now for free at SICscore.com. I don't know how it's going to work out for him, but I just don't see him being on the field nearly as much as he was last season. Maybe the touchdown numbers will, will have him in that tight end one category. Earlier in his career, he would have gotten out. I mean, I guess he had 108 rushing yards, but six rushing touchdowns in his career. So it doesn't give you any upside there. Carr, to be honest, for me, just is not a guy I ever end up targeting. Fantasy Sports Today, only on Sports Grid. You might be the next daily fantasy millionaire. No matter what you watch or where you play, learn from the world's best DFS players. Lineup building tools, expert projections, and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice. the lights the bigger the stakes hunt or be hunted know your prey this is a whole new jungle this is the lion's share brought to you by bet mgm all right carver high i know you're ready let's dip into the lion's share shall we yeah, we need to. We had a little uh, abbreviated schedule in Major League Baseball tonight, Scott. We have a few day games, a lot of teams off, but that doesn't mean we aren't going to cash some tickets. The Lions Share brought to you by BetMGM. We still found some stuff to sprinkle on. Let's go. We'll do the strikeouts first. We've got the Guards and the Orioles again tonight. Cleveland has Shane. Don't call me Justin Bieber on the hill for them tonight, Scott. He Six and a half for Bieber, minus 110 to the over, minus 130 to the under. He's over six and a half in four of his last six starts. Faced the Orioles back in early June. He rang up 11 against them in that matchup. I think he's going to just get by tonight, Scotty. Give me the over for Bieber. Yeah, I mean, it's tough. He, he had nine his last outing and four prior to that lost both of those games. And uh, but really didn't do anything uh, in terms of giving up runs. He gave up one run, so I think that's what he's more interested in. And they lost those games, one and eleven. The other one, two nothing to the White Sox. So prior to that, six, eight, eight. Before that, he's so tough. There's no denying it. I just uh, I don't think he gets seven tonight. I'm gonna stay under. I think he stays at six. 
Yeah, I, I'm just going to lean on because one of his best performances this year was against the Orioles. I'm looking for him to get that Fair magic enough. again uh, with the 11 he had against them last time. We'll go to Spencer Strider next for the Braves. They are, of course, at home against the Rockies again tonight. Strider's number ticks back up, Scotty, with the way he's gone the last couple starts. He had uh, nine last time. Seven and a half the number here. Minus 105 to the over, minus 135 to the under he is under three out of his five starts that he had in august very up and down scotty it's been a bit of a roller coaster for strider he's had hot streaks where he goes over he's had some lulls where he has two three starts in a row where he goes under i'm torn tonight but the rockies aren't very good and it's been a low scoring series over seven and a half for strider for me tonight yeah, based on how bad the Rockies are, I'm fair enough with that. He had seven his last outing, nine prior to seven. that. Both of those games, he allowed one earned run and won them. So uh, I know how uh, tough he is, and I know how bad they are. So I'll ride with you. Brewers and the Diamondbacks start a four-game series out in the desert tonight, Scotty. And I like both arms in this one to dabble with the K-props. First, Brandon Woodruff for the Brewers. Six and a half the number for him. Plus 105 to the over, minus 150 to the under. He's under in three of his last five starts. He did have 10 last time out, but that was against the Cubbies. Diamondback bats have been very good over the last week to 10 days. Under for me, Scotty, with Woodruff tonight in the six and a half. Yeah, I'm under. He did have the 10 against the Cubs, but before that, against the Cubs, five, and they're a bad team. A Tampa, a good team, five. Pirates, a, a bad team, three. The only uh, game that stunned me was when he had eight against the Dodgers. I mean, it's a good matchup tonight with Woodruff and Kelly. I'm going to stay under on Woodruff. And the other starting pitcher is someone who has been very good to us on Coast to Coast. I mean, this is our guy, Scotty. Merrill Lynch Kelly going for the Diamondbacks tonight. And, hey, they're still keeping it at five and a half. They don't want to move this thing up. Minus 105 to the over, minus 135 to the under. He's gone over five and a half in six of his last seven starts. And how about this guy's year, Scotty? Under three ERA for the Diamondbacks. Has a tremendous win-loss record. Kelly's been excellent out there. Uh, except, you know, he's 11 and five, except at home he's three and four. I'm mm. going to take a flyer on him on the over. His last outing was seven and a win. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go over, and I'm also going to take Arizona tonight in this game over Woodruff uh, to win the game. So hopefully he'll pitch better uh, at home than he has previously. Most of his damage has been done on the road, Mike. I like to hear you say that because we'll be going back to the Diamondbacks when we get to the game props uh, here at the end of the lion's share. So I like that little nugget from you. All right, tater time. On the lion's share, we will start with Jose Ramirez tonight, Scotty. And really, the price jumped out at me. We know how good Ramirez is. He hits a lot of bombs. Four homers in his last 10 games. Plus 450 for him tonight. And here's the other side. Bradish is going for the O's. He gives up bombs, man. 15 homers allowed in just 80 innings this year. I'll take a shot with Jose. Yeah, I'm with you. No problem there. He's a badass. And... Your boy throws up gopher balls, so why not? And same thing as, frankly, Garrett Cole. Ace Ventura has always given up big home runs. He did it again last night against Otani. Same thing here. Uh, Bradish is on my salad. Uh, gives up a, a lot of long balls, so why not with the <laughs> baddest guy in the lineup? I love Ramirez. If he was on the Yankees, they wouldn't have all the bum hacks they got now. <laughs> And I think we went to Ramirez about 10 days ago, Scotty, and he rang the bell for us. So he's been good for us, too. We'll That's go right. back to him here. Uh, Dansby Swanson for the Braves tonight. He beats up on Chad. You're so cool. He's four for seven off him in his career, plus 333. I like Dansby tonight. In fact, Scotty, maybe we'll even do one of these combo meals. We'll get everybody involved at the table for Atlanta against Chad. You're so cool tonight down in Hot Town. Yeah, I'm all for it. I, I thought he'd hit one last night, you know, and, uh, you know, I thought it was going to be tee off time last night. Same thing again tonight. I'm, I'm cool with that. Olsen, whoever you want to throw in there. And next we will go to Fenway, the Rangers and the Red Sox opening up a four gamer. Red Sox have, of course, soft tossing lefty Rich Hill 
going tonight, Scotty. What does that mean? We're going to take some of our righty Texas Ranger bats and try to poke a few over the monster. Marcus Simeon, plus 360 tonight. I don't mind Adalas Garcia either if you want it to go that way, but Simeon's my main one at plus 360 against Hill. Yeah, I'm not. No one's hitting a home run off of him tonight. Uh, this guy, his last outing was brilliant. 11 strikeouts, seven innings, three hits, no runs at all. And Rich Hill was brilliant in beating uh, the Rays. He beat the Pirates before that, allowed two earned runs. I think uh, Texas is going to have silent night tonight in Boston. I'm not giving anybody a home run. Next, we will go back out to the desert. Christian Walker, 30 bombs already this year. He has some off of Brandon Woodruff in his career as well. Like Merrill Kelly, two guys who quietly in Arizona have had monster years, plus 375 for Walker tonight. Yeah, this kid has uh, continued to blow my mind. You introduced me to him. I had never heard of him until he you know, had 30 so I'm all over that with you tonight. Why not? And I'm betting on Arizona, as I said earlier. There you go. The Tatum. And I beat him for... twice with the Phillies. I beat him twice with a buck fifty-eight yes. and a buck eighteen. Yep. And then I hit the Phillies last night, and they won eighteen to two. So, uh, and that was prior to uh, they won the three games in Chicago. So I've been making money on the Diamondbacks for like nine days now. I mean, it's a miracle from God. Yep. They have been very good, uh, and we are going to go back to them here in a moment uh, at the game prop, Scotty. Now, I also know we're going to be on opposite sides of this one. I do like the Rangers tonight. I know that you're going with Hill. Rangers have our boy C. Otto going for them here. I like Rangers to win at Fenway. And over 6.5, I lowered the total a little bit here. Plus 250, Ranger win over 6.5. I know you're on the opposite side of me. Yeah, I'm on Rich Hill. He's been really good lately for uh, Boston, so I'm sticking with them. I bet on Texas yesterday, plus a buck 18 against the Astros. They were up 2-1. to one. They had a chance to tie it in the ninth inning. Neither thing happened. I'm done with them. I knew. I knew you weren't going to go back to the Rangers after they got you yesterday down there at home against Houston. Next, Braves and the Rockies tonight. Strider and Chad, you're so cool. Both teams to score just three runs, Scotty. Low-scoring games the last two nights down in Atlanta. I think we'll get some runs tonight. Plus 155, both teams to score three or more. Love it. I'm with you there. And finally, the Diamondbacks. I will stay on them along with you to beat the Brewers tonight with Merrill Lynch Kelly and under seven and a half runs scored in the game plus 275 woodruff and kelly but the d-backs win under seven and a half let's go yeah i'm i'm down with that because uh both of these guys uh, i i respect woodruff um i didn't do the over with him on strikeouts but he's you know basically three runs a game and kelly's been even better than that under three runs a game you got two guys that are nine and three eleven and five kelly the latter uh, I'm on Arizona, and I like that under as well. So I'm with you on that one, too. Well, but Not a lot of night, night games. With, didn't we hit Otani yeah. last night with that home run? Uh, yes, we had the sprinkle with Otani last night. We had uh, a couple of the game props did come through for us, too. Uh, so we had a pretty decent night uh, all around. We mentioned with the strikeout props, DeGrom got over the 8.5. We had a few of them there. So uh, a decent night for us. Probably just got over the Mendoza line, Scotty. Uh, when it comes to the lion's share. We got a lot of chips on the table in this Arizona-Milwaukee game tonight. Not many games on the card with the, tonight, only three or four night games, but I think we'll get it done. Christian Walker, Merrill Lynch, Kelly, Diamondbacks winning the under. Round them all up, Scotty, for the lion's share tonight. Well, you know, I look, I think the, the night games, the game in Boston, game in Cleveland, game in Atlanta, game in uh, Zona, the game in Zona to me is the best game uh, with those two pitchers going. And then it's hard for me... Uh, to be honest with you, the Dodger Met game, I'm very interested in. But tonight, to me, the backyard brawl and Penn State Purdue, that's the end of baseball for me, like tonight. Like, I mean, I'm watching the Dodger Mets and then I'm going right into violence and football as fast as you can spit. I may not even eat dinner.
The Lion's Share, presented by BetMGM. The morning after. What did you make of this decision by San Francisco to retain Jimmy Garoppolo, have him on the roster in the QB room for 2022? Well, what we heard the entire offseason was how the 49ers were trying to shop Jimmy G the entire time. But they weren't hearing back great offers. Now, it doesn't mean he's going to be there for the whole entire season. As you know, it gives them about two more months before the trade deadline, and they could actually move him before that. The Sports Grid Network. They sent out a Jordan Montgomery, who evidently is the best pitcher in baseball. I know it's the Cubs. I don't care. But it looks like maybe word is getting out that, you know what? We don't really have an offensive coordinator. Why don't you guys get used to calling real plays with real players in the game and see if we can work something out over, let's just say, the first half. The Early Line, only on SportsGrid. Fantasy Sports Today. Cam Akers was one of the bigger stories of last year, returning very early from an ACL injury. And, uh, and, and, you know, what a, what a really great story it was, but unfortunately didn't look very good when he came back. Now, a lot can be attributed to that, and I guess that's why we'll do a deeper dive here. His ADP is 18 in terms of running backs taken. His positional ranking is 18, and overall is going approximately in the third round. The Sports Grid Network. the next daily fantasy millionaire no matter what you watch or where you play learn from the world's best dfs players lineup building tools expert projections and advanced stats change the way you play the game dominate the competition dailyroto.com the player's choice Pro Football Doc has found its new home right here with Sports Injury Central. And with that comes our expansion into other sports. Sports Injury Central will give you nonstop exclusive injury analysis from experienced team doctors from all three major sports. Doctors with resumes that include teams like the Chicago Bulls, the Texas Rangers, and the LA Chargers. So gain a fantasy DFS and betting edge right now for free at SICscore.com. Well, the Cleveland Cavaliers got their uh, new LeBron James. Uh, It's Donovan Mitchell in a trade to Cleveland this afternoon. He will be playing for the Cavs. I think it's basically what Carver Hyde told me, five draft picks, three unprotected first rounders and two other ones to swap, but we'll get it cleared up. I don't really care. All I know is the Knicks suck, and I just wanted to say that real quick before we move on. Scoop Mish is here, Craig Mish from Fantasy Sports Today, and of course, the great Newswire show on Sports Grid. He's a regular every week and contributing at a high level for Coast to Coast on Sports Grid TV. Scoop, good to see you. Uh, you heard me talking about the Dodgers. What I liked about your uh, explanation was instead of worrying about me losing money, you said that it takes so much to beat them, the stars have to align, et cetera. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah, they by far are the best team that I've seen in the National League. Probably the best team by far in Major League Baseball. There there are some teams, Scott, that rely solely on analytics. There are some teams that are behind in analytics and rely a lot more on scouting. And then there are the Dodgers who really have that combination going. I mean, they may even go 70-30 against the analytics. I, I just think that... They've, they've really figured out how to maximize every plate appearance. 
every pitching appearance, and they're continually churning that bullpen with players that essentially from one year to the next don't even return to the team. Like they don't have Kenley Jansen. We make so much about Scott, the ninth inning and oh my gosh. And Edwin Diaz, he's amazing. And they're going to win a million games and, and he's the best and the trumpet. The Dodgers don't even have a closer and they have 90 wins. Like it is just a juggernaut. Now, again, they're spending the most, if not the most money, in all of Major League Baseball, so they should win close to this amount, these amount of games. But I don't see the Mets beating them. I don't care if they have four DeGroms and four Scherzers. I, I think the Dodgers are going to the World Series this year. Do you think that the Mets will make it to the NLCS against them? And uh, do you think we'll see Anderson against DeGrom again? Because I got to tell you, I thought Tyler pitched great last night. Yeah, and, and left and and what's really fascinating to me this year is left-handed pitchers in general are keeping the numbers down across the league. Even right-handed hitters are having problems against right. against left-handed pitching, and that has played its way into what Tyler Anderson has done this season. I mean, can the Mets get there? Sure. I mean, I I think that the odds would speak to that possibility, but I'm not going to rule out in a seven game series, Atlanta beating them by any stretch. The Cardinals have this magic, Scott, as you know, that it like literally, literally doesn't matter who's on their team. They somehow find a way to win a game five or win a game seven and get themselves into that position. So I, I guess I'm just more bullish on the Dodgers at this point. I'm, and, I, and it's not because they beat the Marlins like, like crazy over the last couple of weeks, which they have, but I, but I saw them play in person and I, and I saw the way that they operate, and and I just really feel like they are the team to beat. Uh, Houston not having Verlander is a huge, huge loss. Right. Like he can't pitch at all in the postseason. I can't back them. Well, let's go back to – because I'm not done yet with the Dodgers. Let's go back to the, the Sandy start against them when Sandy shut them down a few days ago. Once again, uh, solidifying the Cy Young. That was some brilliant stuff because the Marlins stink – and that guy goes out and just absolutely puts on a performance. And he's every bit as good as anyone in baseball uh, working on the hill. What did you think of that performance? And while you're at it, what do you think Kershaw will do today in the beautiful weather in New York? Uh, it's just absolutely perfect. No humidity, nice little breeze, perfect sunshine. He's coming back to face the Basset Hound here in about 25 minutes at City Field right near the tennis center. What do you expect out of him today? And and go back to the Sandy start against the Dodgers. Right. And, and to my point, the Marlins beat the Dodgers one time in seven tries. And I believe it was by one run in that game that Sandy started. Right. He had to go the entire way in order to get that done. He's been the best pitcher in baseball. It's not particularly close. The nonsense that Tony Gonsolin had a chance to win the Cy Young because he was 16-1. and one. Scott, if, if Sandy was in the Dodgers, how many wins would he have? 25 this season? I mean, yep. I'm not even really sure. Right. I mean, that's no disrespect to Gonsolin. He's had a great year. But look, look, that start was just typical of what he's done for the majority of the season. I know he had his issues the last time against the Dodgers. Everyone thinks that Sandy just simply has been tipping his pitches against different teams. And that's the only reason why he gets hit. And, the Dod and I think that probably happened the last time against L.A. Because look how good he pitched this past time. At least that's the, the thought process there. Uh, as far as this afternoon, I mean, does it matter? I mean, Kershaw's going to pitch five innings, and they're going to bring in Evan Phillips, and then they're going to bring in Bickford, and they're going to bring in Chris Martin, and none of them are going to give up any runs. <laughs> the Dodgers are probably going to win. I mean, that's that's probably what's going to happen. Right? Again, it, it is just it, it's just something to behold with this team. Now, obviously, yeah. they lost Gratterall. That's a big loss for them in the seventh or eighth inning. Um, you know, the Dodgers are unbeatable against left-handed pitching. I mean, that's, that's a fact because they put Trace Thompson in that lineup somehow, and this guy just can't get out against lefties. But, yeah, I mean, probably a competitive game. Again, I like the Mets a lot. It's not to say that they can't beat the Dodgers in a series. I just I, – I can't back it. I, I think the Dodgers are legit. Kershaw probably – if I had to set an over-under, six innings would be the max today. For him. Did you see Freddie the other night uh, with that – little line drive he put down on the bag at third when they had to shift over and he he drove it down the left field corner and then he got the double out of it i mean they do everything right like all these teams have a shift on in baseball and you could literally put strippers out in the field naked jumping up and down and the hitter still couldn't find the hole 
and and I see Freddie Freeman step up and just boom right down the line. They leave it open and he he knocks it down the line and he's a, a pull hitter and a you know right center. He drives it to the right or the right center. I couldn't believe when he just plopped it right down and meant business. They do everything right. Let me ask you about uh, the Giants and the White Sox. Can we put a fork in both of them at this point? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, the, it's over for both of them. Uh, okay, so the White Sox are, are really disappointing, but, you know, I, I think probably when you look at the Giants, they're more disappointing this season because – if I'm not mistaken, I believe in May or June, they were more than 10 games over 500. So this is a pretty big collapse for them. The White Sox just never got going all season long, Scott. And, you know, they, they were counting on both pitching and hitting. They've had some good pitching performances. Dylan Cease has got a shot at the Cy Young. He probably finished his second. But Kopech got hurt and Lance Lynn was not the same. For some reason, Eloy Jimenez stopped hitting home runs. So, you know, they've had issues across the board. Everyone wants to put it on the manager. So what? So what's the difference, Scott? If Tony La Russa wasn't the manager and there was somebody else, how many more wins would the White Sox have? Two? Three? Maximum? They weren't making the postseason right. either way. The Giants are an interesting case because it just seems to me, I don't know about you, that when, when you can't figure out why a team isn't good, you have to go back to the season before. How did they win 100 games, things like that? I mean, Buster Posey very clearly was worth a lot more to that team than we thought. And, and I think that the fire that he brought and just sort of the day-to-day professional operation that they had with him being gone and really no replacement, it, his war may have been four or three, but I think he was worth more, a lot more to that team. They're going to have to explore some changes, I think, the Giants in the offseason. All right, Scoop, let's talk about the Yankees for a second because they're going uh, you know, after, just in my view, an utter disaster on the West Coast again. The A series was laughable. And then uh, again, they lost to the Angels that series. Now it's down to six, and they head to Tampa for three starting Friday, and their lead is only six. If they get swept, They're 10 and 18 in August, so don't tell me they can't be swept in Tampa by the Rays, who've been playing great baseball. It could get down to three by Monday morning. I mean, I suppose it is possible, yeah. I wouldn't rule it out. I've I've been, I mean, since I've been on with you doing this, I've been telling you that the Yankees are, you know, just simply built for the regular season, and and it looks like they're just built for the first half of the season. Now, Tampa Bay is also entering this a little banged up. Now, McClanahan is not going to pitch in this series. Brandon Lowe went on the injured list again. And and they're having a hard time scoring runs, too. So this, Scott, without without me sort of indicting the Yankees, this series kind of plays into them a little bit because they're having trouble. The Rays are having trouble scoring. So I don't, I don't know that this series in particular is the one that you're going to yell and scream with the Yankees. But can the Rays catch them? Absolutely. They've done it before. Why not do it again? Well, they've won eight of 10 and they've won three in a row. And I agree with you. They're not scoring a lot of runs, but they're doing their normal, uh, as Carver highlights to say, cash is winning again with nothing. And uh, there they are. Uh, if, if, you know, if you win, I don't care how you win. Ugly, big, small, yeah. short, tall. I don't care how you win. They, they win. And the Always. Yankees, I mean, I, honestly, I got to tell you, like I'm getting, I'm aging watching the Yankees. When I watch their games, I'm getting so mad, so angry, so foul-mouthed, and I, I have veins sticking out of my neck. I got, I'm got i turning purple. My dog left the room. He doesn't hang out with me anymore. And it's because of Aaron Boone and the Yankees. And I blame it all on uh, Brian Cashman. I just wanted to say that. Uh, last night, I hit the Orioles plus a buck 50 mm. on the road uh, in Cleveland. Do you like their chances in this wild card as they continue to stun everyone? They're two back of Toronto. Uh, what are their chances in Scoop's world? I mean, they're going to have to win some of those head-to-head matchups against the Blue Jays. It's going to be really tough. I think Seattle in the American League is is like the sleeping giant because they have the pitching and they have the health, Scott. And right now, those are the two things that Seattle has over everyone. So I got them in. I mean, can they do it? Can they catch the Blue Jays? I mean, I suppose it is possible. They're playing all these young kids who don't know any better, and they call up this kid, Gunnar Henderson, and he hits a home run. So, I, I, you know, the thing is, Scott, is they have, like, the country rooting for them, you know? Like, they have everyone pulling for them. 
Yeah. And do I think they could do it? Sure. But but inevitably, this is going to come down to late September when they have the head-to-head matchup. So I, I think they can. It'd be a fun story. So uh, do you think when Seattle did that deal with Rodriguez that uh, they were nervous uh, giving him that length and that amount of money after, frankly, what Tatis just did to the Padres? I- I'm scared to death to give anybody 14 years or whatever yeah. the hell it is. Honestly, like if I'm a GM, I'm, I'm, I can't sleep at night. I'm eating pills. I don't know how you give that kind of money to a kid. And, and, you know, a kid just like him just cheated his way into $340 million. And now that guy doesn't have a friend in the world. Yeah. I, I think that that comes down to knowing your own organization and see you just have to, you, you had to give San Diego the benefit of the doubt. You have to now give Seattle the benefit of the doubt. But, you know, I, I guess the difference with Tatis a little bit was that, like, he had some special deal even when he signed that long-term contract that not all the money was going directly to him. He had, like, some investment company that had invested in his future. You'd have to look that up. I'm not exactly sure how You're that You're right. Worked. You're right about that. You're right. Yeah. So, 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 so that's a little bit of a red flag, I think, to, to a degree, I think, to start with. But the fact is, is that his father played at a very high level in the big leagues, too, you know? So... Uh, you, you just you when when those deals get done, you have to give the organizations the benefit of the doubt that they've done their homework and they know who the player is. They obviously feel really good about Julio Rodriguez. So who am I to question it? I think the one person that's on the outside of this looking in, Scott, is that two years ago, if I would have told you Seattle signed somebody to a 14 year deal, 250 million dollar deal, you would have said, Craig, it's Jared Kellenick. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Scoop, I love you. Great stuff. We'll see you next week. Your heart's racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. 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 Get locked in with game time decisions. Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best lips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Cam Lou, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions only on Sports Grid. I just don't see him being on the field nearly as much as he was last season. Maybe the touchdown numbers will, will have him in that tight end one category. Earlier his career, he would have gotten out. I mean, I guess he had 108 rushing yards, but six rushing touchdowns in his career. So it doesn't give you any upside there. Carr, to be honest, for me, just is not a guy I ever end up targeting. Fantasy Sports Today, only on Sports Grid. You might be the next daily fantasy millionaire. No matter what you watch or where you play, learn from the world's best DFS players. Lineup building tools, expert projections, and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice.
All right, Carver High, give me the uh, skinny on the huge trade today of Donovan Mitchell to the Cleveland Cavaliers of all teams. Go figure. Yeah, here's all the particulars, Scotty, of this deal. The Cavs are going to send Colin Sexton, Laurie Markinen, Ochi Agbaji, our boy from Kansas, three first-round picks and two pick swaps to the Jazz for Donovan Mitchell. Sexton will also get a four-year, $72 million contract via sign-and-trade from the Jazz in the deal as well, Scotty. So there you go. Bunch of pieces and five picks moving to the Jazz for Donovan Mitchell. Well, I actually think it's a great trade for Cleveland. Um, Sexton was never really, uh, you know, in their plans, believe it or not, after Garland came around. Am I crazy? And Mobley. And I think with Mitchell and those two star players, uh, they've got a, a nice three-piece core that they can uh, build around a playoff caliber team for sure. Uh, and they already were. I think it's a, a great steal for them to, you know, in the night, swoop in and steal Spida Mitchell from the Knicks, who had tried every piece possible to make a trade with him. And it never came to fruition. They wouldn't give him enough. And then R.J. Barrett re-signed, and that was the end of it. And there was some talk that they would still do it with uh, Quentin Grimes. That didn't happen. So now you've got uh, Quickly, Grimes, Barrett all still on the Knicks, and the Knicks are still the Knicks, and the Knicks still suck. And now they have uh, a team in Cleveland that just got Mitchell. They're better than the Knicks. So And, and Sexton's happy because he didn't matter anymore in Cleveland. He goes to Utah and got rich. So, and I'm not even sure he's worth that kind of capital, but it is what it is. I think it's a great deal for both ends and more so Cleveland. Certainly is. The Cavs, of course, uh, fell into the playoff game after that hot start last year. Going to be better this year. With Mitchell.